Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and welcome back to another ranking video. And since today is Championship Saturday between the Shanghai Dragons and the Atlanta Reign, I figured now would be a good time to look at each and every single Overwatch League Legendary skin and rank them. See, one cool thing the Overwatch League loves to do is make commemorative skins for certain celebrations within the Overwatch League. Whether it's celebrating a new MVP, or celebrating a new champion, or celebrating a composition that completely ruined the second Overwatch League season and basically took out all the fun of competitive Overwatch. <laughs> so today, I want to rank each and every single legendary skin that was tailor-made to the Overwatch League, with the exception of one legendary skin. You know what skin I'm talking about. I just don't want to include it on this list because, oh, why well, you included that skin with who it's associated by? So rather than just trying to touch that skin with a 10-foot pole, I'm just going to ignore it. You can put it anywhere on your list, but let me know down in the comments below what your favorite Overwatch League legendary skin is. But without further ado, let's rank each and every single legendary Overwatch League skin. Starting off with controversy right away at number 16, Roadhog Mita's championship skin takes the cake as the worst Overwatch League legendary skin. Now, Mita's Roadhog isn't the worst Overwatch League legendary skin because it's bad per se, it's just extremely boring, especially when you compare it to the other San Francisco Shock championship skin with Thunder Doomfist. You got so much details, all the Easter eggs, complete transformation of Doomfist with the skin in Gauntlet, and you guys know me, I'm not the biggest fan of Doomfist, but that skin is extremely well put together to commemorate and celebrate the championship. And then you got Roadhog over here looking like a complete billboard for the Shock, with the San Francisco Shock logo just plastered on his belly with champions on it. While I do love Roadhog's helmet being on fire, because y'all know I love my animated skins, I feel like for a major feat, they shouldn't really give Roadhog a seemingly epic skin to celebrate the championship win. Ah, another controversial pick. Granted, a lot of these lower rank skins are going to be controversial because, well, they're so cool looking that it's hard to pick the worst of the best. But here we got Reinhardt in the latest edition of the All-Star skin roster where he's featured as a glowing tree. Uh Okay, not the worst concept of a skin. <laughs> Every All-Star skin has a counterpart to their skin, where here, Reinhardt's counterpart was D.Va's All-Star skin, where she represents the heavens, and Reinhardt represents the earth. And that definitely shows, and they portrayed what an earthly-like skin would look like, and Reinhardt, yeah, he pulls it off. I love the firefly scene around his antlers and little green touches here and there throughout the skin, but I feel like the wood is just very overbearing to make up a large portion of of the skin. That's why I feel like D.Va is a lot better between the 2020 All-Stars, but also why I think Reinhardt just kind of gets outshined by a lot of the other Overwatch League skins. Maybe they could have done something with his shield or made more animations like they did with D.Va's pants, or maybe even just giving him different sound effects. I think that would have bumped him up a little bit, but Reinhardt, he's a solid 15. Now this might come to a surprise to a lot of y'all because you know I love me some May skins even though this is probably one of the most controversial May skins even though it's not really supposed to be that controversial. In case you guys don't know, the May Melee May skin was released to celebrate the May tournament going on in the Overwatch League this year and it was supposed to obviously represent May in a more boxing or fighting like style. And you obviously see that style come to life with her jacket, her gloves, her boxing bag with Snowball on the back. But the controversial part here is her hairstyle, where they gave her of a functional boxing hairstyle with dreadlocks, but that obviously is obviously associated with African American hairstyle. And a lot of people really didn't like that because, well, May is obviously not African American, but besides that controversy, I feel like the rest of the skin is pretty dope for the name iteration, what they were trying to go for with the boxing-like style. I just feel like if they would have given her maybe just a typical ponytail, like not going with dreadlocks, it not only A, would have looked a lot better, but B, you wouldn't have had that controversy of stealing African-American hairstyle and giving it to someone who doesn't represent that. But also why it's not good is because, well, May's not really the boxing type. I feel like she's more of the cutesy woo kind of girl, and that's why she looks good in the jang -Shi skin or the beekeeper or honeydew. Not really like a brawlic fighter that's looking to like beat people up. Coming in at number 13 is the second composition to be made into a skin. We got Pirate Ship Bastion. Of course, Bastion being the anchor of the Pirate Ship. You see how I, how I, I like, Pirate Ship and then anchor, it's a ship. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I always have a high appreciation for Bastion skins because you basically have to make three Bastion skins for just one style. His recon mode, his turret mode, and also his tank mode all have to somehow be related to one another because he's transforming into a different style. So you still have to make it look good. And they really did that with this pirate ship skin. You have tons of pirate ship details with the pirate ship flag or the sails with the skull and sword. You also have turrets with his regular turret and also his cannon, which is very common on pirate ships. You also have barrels, a pirate ship flag on the end of his turret, but then to top things off, the reason why you should have gotten the pirate ship skin to begin with is of course Bastion's bird being transformed into a cute little bear and he squawks, even though that was super annoying when this skin was first introduced when you're just hanging out on the menu. Just, you just heard squawk, squawk, squawk. Here we got one of the original Overwatch League Legendary skins, Flying Ace. Winston is of course representing the Len Spitfire and their grand accomplishment of being the very first Overwatch League champions. One reason why I love Flying Ace so much is that it represents the team that won the championship, obviously, but it's not a skin to where if you're not a fan of the Len Spitfire, you can't like this skin or rock it because he's supposed to represent a pilot that flies a Spitfire or just flies a plane. That's the main silhouette, the main concept of this Winston skin. You obviously have the lens Spitfire colors seen throughout the skin and the logo on the side, but that's basically it. It just looks like a typical pilot skin with the hat and the jacket, but especially his backpack with the little blades on the back. He just looks so adorable. And then the mustache and then the goggles. Oh, I just want to pinch Winston's cheeks. I always love Winston skins, so I'm very glad they gave Winston the pilot skin. If not, they should have given it to Tracer because, well, she's an actual pilot. I'm actually wondering why didn't they give it to Tracer? <laughs> Thunder Doomfist, the first San Francisco Shock Championship skin and the second championship skin in the Overwatch League. <clears throat> This skin is ugly. <laughs> now this skin isn't bad. Oh no, this skin is awesome. But Doofus himself looks absolutely busted, bro. Like you would not want to take this man on a date. No, sir. You wouldn't want to bring this man to Christmas dinner with your family back at home. No, sir. Would you marry this young man? No, I didn't think so. M maybe just a one night stand because you know he's he's got that little fist thing going. It's, you you know what I mean. But this skin is all about the details. We got this shock wavelength on his forehead. You also got San Francisco's SF on the belt. Even when he punches the ground, it has SF there. And his whole entire body is made up of these rocks, like as if he's lava that's hardened over time. Like this skin is dope. He just looks really freaking ugly, bro. <laughs> Looking like Baraka from Mortal Kombat. Ah, uh, can you please play Smushy, please? <laughs> The boy Lucio takes the number 10 spot with his 2019 All-Star skin. Honestly, there's nothing to complain about with this skin. One cool thing about it is that his mane, his hair changes colors based on the song that you're playing. But besides that, there's really not much else going on with this skin. It's just a typical Lucio skin where he's representing the sun. But it's a cool looking skin. He doesn't look ugly. See, this is somebody that I would take home to Christmas dinner. Now, not Doomfist from the last skin. <laughs> This is where it gets tricky to rake some of these skins because at number nine, we got Ange de la Mort, Widowmaker's legendary skin that's supposed to represent the June Joust tournament that of course took place in June of this year. <laughs> Ange de la Mort translates from French to Angel of Death in English, which is perfect for Widowmaker because well, Widowmaker is obviously an angel, but just, just loves to kill. She's always in a silly, goofy mood. Like when she killed her husband just casually on a Tuesday afternoon because well, he didn't bring groceries home and well, what are they gonna make for dinner? We had McDonald's for the last three days and I'm already feeling fat, you know? So I'm just gonna, oops, oops sniped you, sorry. But besides my uh, poorly written fan fiction, the rest of the skin is actually like kind of confusing like I don't really know what the silhouette is trying to go for she doesn't look like an angel but she doesn't look like a grim reaper like reaper looks like the grim reaper but Widowmaker looks like an elegant kind of grim reaper like we got reaper and then we got a distant second cousin with Widowmaker that yeah brings death with her heels mm. 
at number eight, we got the very first set of all-star skins. First with Tracer representing the Atlantic Division with her all-star skin. Like I briefly mentioned with the Reinhardt skin, the Pacific and the Atlantic Division all-stars always get represented with two contrasting skins, with Reinhardt and Diva represent the heavens and the earth, and then with Lucio and Mercy, we got the sun and the moon, but here with Genji and Tracer, we got water and fire. But what I love most about Tracer's all-star skin is that not only did we get a great looking mermaid skin, but we also got sound effects every time she blinks with little splashes to represent, hey, she's a little mermaid in the water. That's something that I really do feel like is missing in a lot of skins is if you're going to make a legendary skin that's kind of one off and very special, well, go all out. Don't just design a skin to have different voice lines or have different sound effects. Like with Pink Mercy, every time she reses, it's like a little chime or whatnot. I want more of that because a lot of these legendary skins, they kind of get lost with other legendary skins that come into the game, where if you have special sound effects, it makes it special and one-off. <laughs> Our favorite Grandma Sniper makes a grand appearance with her legendary skin, uh, Haroes? I always mispronounce it, but this is a skin that's supposed to be a callback to the god of war and the sky, and a god that is very popular in Egyptian folklore and culture, which is perfect for Ana because she is Egyptian. But this was another Overwatch League tournament skin held in July where Ana got featured to represent this bird-like creature. We see a giant bird on her chest, we see bird claws on her feet, and on her hands, but then we also have this cool helmet where it's this gladiator helmet, but on her right side, she obviously is missing her eye because typically she wears an eye patch, but it's this Sharingan red-like eye, but then a wing on the helmet, which I absolutely love. Some people don't like the helmet. They want to see her hair flown, which I think might have made the skin a little bit better, but I think the way that the skin is, I think it still looks dope. I mean, Ana skins are always dope because, well, she's a grandma sniper. Anytime you get to transform Ana, but also her sniper to look completely different, it's probably always gonna look dope, and Ana definitely does look dope. I know, I know. Oh, Mercy's all-star skin at number six. No, it should be number one. No! You wanna know why it deserves the number six spot? It's because it's a good skin, but not good enough. See, in 2018, we had different sound effects, and Mercy even has a skin that has a different sound effect with Pink Mercy. With the All-Star skin, you only get a great looking skin with admittedly awesome looking hair. She definitely didn't go to Great Clips, and she got her clothes designed by Louis Vuitton and Gucci. Don't know how she got both of them to do her suit, but then her wings looking as magnificent as ever with the purple and blue grading effect and then the moon crescent on her forehead and wings but it's only deserving a number six okay it's a good skin but it could be better if they spent as much time as they did with the genji and the tracer skins this probably would be in the top five easy Hey, I know all my weebs out there are going to defend me because at number five, we got 2018 All-Star Genji, baby! Yeah, I know all my Mercy mains just left the video. So anyway, at number five, we got Genji's Lava Skin. We got Shark Boy and Lava Girl representing the Pacific Atlantic Division in the 2018 All-Star Game, and I love it. And it's literally all because of Genji's helmet being on fire. Oh, then why did you rank Roadhog skin at the number 16 spot? It's because he doesn't do it like Genji. It just makes sense for Genji to have a fiery skin. Roadhog, he doesn't go fast. How is he on fire if he don't go fast? Genji, he's all slicing and dicing and moving throughout the map and going, <laughs> super fast, suck it, suck it. Wait, that's Hanzo. He looks cool, man. We got the lava skin seen throughout. We also have his armor with this leather style. And then his, I can't get enough of his helmet. But what? I still don't know why they made his mouth the way that it does. Hi, hi, baby girl. M Mercy, can you can you pocket me, please? I promise I'll I'll buy you Discord Nitro, please. <laughs> We got the latest and last MVP skin to ever make it to the Overwatch League, Fled is Good and Evil Echo skin. But why we're not getting any more MVP skins is because a certain somebody just couldn't take no for an answer. It's kind of sad, it's not supposed to be a joke, but we won't be getting any more MVP skins, so we have to appreciate Fleta's design for this Echo skin, and man, did he kill it. You have Echo be made up of half angel and half devil, which is where the name Good and Evil comes from, but what I love most about it is that I feel like this 
is very fitting for Echo because, well, Echo can transform into anything that she wants. She can transform into an angel or she can transform into a devil, but here you have both into this great, magnificent, legendary Echo skin. It's, oh, it's, it's so good, man. Fleta did such a good job. The Overwatch League skin designs did such a good job. I just, I just can't get enough of this Echo skin. But here we have the last All-Star skin on our list with D.Va's 2020 All-Star skin. Is it because I love D.Va skins that it's this timeless? Maybe. No, it is. It definitely is. <laughs> but come on, now the mech being this heavenly cloud with light blue accent colors, and then you got D.Va herself with the Karen cuts, and then the starry sky pants as well that moves every time she moves. This is a well-crafted skin that got extra love, just, just got a little bit more sprinkle of love compared to Reinhardt. I absolutely adore whenever Blizzard or the Overwatch League completely retransforms a character's hairstyle because, well, I like Mercy's hair and Tracer's hair and Diva's hair. It gets a little bit boring just seeing the same natural hair color or maybe changing it to like a ponytail or whatnot. Nah, let's give it a different kind, different hairstyle. And here they gave her the most infamous haircut that you can ever give to somebody, but they made her a cool Karen by making her hair frost white. Also kind of inspiring my hair color because I just really like that haircut. <laughs> One of, if not the greatest MVP skin to ever grace upon our toxic fail game, Jonax MVP skin with Zenyatta and his squid-like skin. Here's why I like this skin so much. Jonax's favorite animal, specifically sea creature, is of course an octopus. I don't think that's common knowledge, but now you know. And his favorite hero in Overwatch is Zenyatta. They are not alike at all. Those two are completely polar opposites, a robot and a squid. But somehow, the two worlds came together and collided and made one of the greatest legendary skins that we will ever see in all of Overwatch with this squid-like, robot-like, harmony, evil... And this, uh, this skin just puts me at a loss for words because it should not work, but it does. We got Zenyatta's head being consumed by an octopus in this fish tank and also his orbs are the same kind of octopus squid-like style too. Then we got the New York Excelsior colors and the logo on his banner once again, not just in your face that this is a New York Excelsior exclusive skin. Nah, this is a skin that everybody can like, but it's supposed to commemorate the New York Excelsior player, Jonak. I love this skin so much. Why can't we have more MVPs? Because I know why, but when I see skins like this, it's like, man, if only, if only we can get more. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not the number one Overwatch League legendary skin. No, 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 no. This goes to a skin that brings back a traumatic pass in Overwatch League history. It's the whole reason why so many people left Overwatch. It's the whole reason why so many people stopped watching the Overwatch League in the second season. It's the sole reason why we have roll queue in Overwatch to begin with because the developers they, they couldn't figure it out. They couldn't figure out how to tame this beast that is known as Goat Brigida. Like pirate ship Bastion, Goat Brigida is used to commemorate a composition in the Overwatch League, but most notably in the whole entire world of Overwatch. Everybody remembers Ghost, and even if you didn't play at the time, or even if you played in the first month and you got tired of it, you remember how devastating Goats was. The most infamous composition in Overwatch containing three tanks, three supports, the three tanks being Reinhardt, Zarya, and D.Va, the three supports being Brigida, Lucio, and Zenyatta. Sometimes the Mora instead of the Zenyatta, but definitely the Brigida. That is the sole reason why Goats even works to begin with. What you would do, you would have the Reinhardt hold up his shield, you would have the Lucio speed boost you in, and you would have the Brigida just whipping everybody, bashing everybody everybody and hitting everybody living out my BDSM dream in Overwatch and you would win if you had the go composition you won almost every single time one of the most deadly compositions in Overwatch so deadly to the point where the developers had to change the coding of Overwatch to how you queued up for competitive no longer were you free to switch to any hero now you had to queue up for a specific role DPS tank and or support and you were only allowed two heroes per role that's how crazy goats was
And then the Overwatch League decided to have a big meme fest and bring us a GOAT Brigida skin because, hey, don't you love trauma in your video games? Well, now you can purchase trauma for 200 League tokens. But besides the awful, awful past of the GOAT composition, the skin looks good, man. Brigida looks good with the purple hair and the GOAT horns, and you see other GOAT accessories like on her chest and even in her whip with the horns, and then the GOAT shield with the GOAT crescent on the front. Ah, it looks so good, man. If if only Brigida wasn't the most hated hero in Overwatch, this skin would probably be loved by everybody, but that's why I'm ranking it at number one, so that you can have an appreciation for this skin. N -n not not goat composition, because <laughs> goats suck nuts, bro. <laughs> it suck goat nuts. But that was my list of the best Overwatch League legendary skins, but I really want to know what your favorite legendary skin is. Is it Goat Brigida? Is it Minas Roadhog? Is it Thunder Doomfist? I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of San Francisco Shock fans saying, oh, Thunder should be number one, but let me know in the comments down below. But I Love you guys. Thank you guys for watching and go watch the Atlanta Rain, the Shanghai Dragons game today because it's going to be a good one. And once again, we will get another championship skin. But I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More watch videos to come and bye.